another chance for you to participate in the youngster class. I'm glad you're here. How you doing? Has it been a good week for you? I sure hope it has. Well, let's get started by going to prayer. Ready? Let's close our eyes and fold our hands. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for all that you do for us. Please be with our government, be with our families, be with um, our friends. Keep us all safe, Lord. These things we pray in your precious name. Amen. Wonderful. I'm glad you prayed with me. Now it's time for the pledge. You're right. So let's get out the flag and we 
we take our right hand and put it over our heart and we say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job. All right. Now we're going to do the Christian pledge. Does everybody remember that? Now, I want you to uh, remember that when you are, uh, when you say that Christian pledge, if you have your parents record it and send it to us, we'll send you a little sweet treat. Okay? So let's get started. Right hands over our heart and we say, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior crucified, risen and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. Wonderful job. Now record that, okay? We'll be waiting to hear from you. Okay, now let's go to Miss Bessie for her lesson. See you soon. Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn who is Jacob and Esau. Now remember last week Esau was born first and Jacob was born holding Esau's heel. Remember that their mother Rebecca asked God why the baby struggled within her. And God told Rebecca that two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people. One people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger. Remember that? When the boys grew and Esau became a hunter who loved to be outside and Jacob became a plain man. That's what the body says or Bible says, but what that means is he was a homebody. He just wanted to stay in his tent and not get out and run around. And one day, Jacob made a pot of stew. Esau came home from hunting and he was very hungry. Esau asked for a bowl. And you know what Jacob said? Sell me your birthright. Esau said, well, birthright is no good if I die from hunger. So, okay. You know, this kind of sounds mean on Jacob's part, but remember, this is part of God's plan. Remember how he told Rebecca the younger would serve, the older would serve the younger. Now, remember from last week that their dad, Isaac, got old and blind and he was ready to pass his blessing to Esau. Isaac wanted a bowl of deer stew before he gave his blessing, so Esau went hunting. Remember Jacob pretended to be Esau and tricked his dad Isaac into blessing him? Remember how mad Esau was when he found out and he wanted to kill Jacob after Esau died? Well, let's pick up with the next part. Rebecca went to Isaac and wanted him to send Jacob back to their homeland to find a wife. Isaac agreed and blessed Jacob and sent Jacob to Rebecca's brother Laban to find a Jewish wife. Well, when Esau found out that he was blessing Jacob and told him not to marry a woman from Canaan? Well, he was furious. Esau went to live with Ishmael, his great uncle, and married Ishmael's daughter, Mahalath. Jacob was on his way to Haran and stopped for the night to sleep. He dreamed of a ladder from earth to heaven. The angels were going up and down the ladder. At the top of the ladder was the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall 
all families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Well, Jacob named the place Bethel. Jacob went on and he saw a well with a great stone covering it. There was three herds of sheep around the well and they were waiting to be watered. Jacob asked the herdsmen where this place was and they answered, Haran. Jacob asked if they knew Laban and they said they did and that his daughter Rachel was coming with the sheep. Well, once Rachel came, Jacob rolled the great stone lid away so the sheep could be watered. Once they were watered, Jacob kissed Rachel and wept. Jacob told Rachel who he was and she ran to tell her father. When Laban came, he invited Jacob to stay with him. Jacob was there about a month when Laban asked Jacob what wages he wanted to work for him. And Jacob answered, I will serve you for seven years for Rachel. Jacob loved Rachel. Well, at the end of the seven years, Laban substituted Leah, which is his firstborn daughter, and Rachel's sister for Rachel, and he didn't tell Jacob. Laban gave Leah a maid, and her name was Zilpah, and he gave it to him as a wedding gift. When Jacob woke up the next morning and Leah was there, he was mad at Laban. Well, he went to Laban and questioned him, what are you doing? Laban said, well, you know, Leah's the oldest and she had to be married first. But if you'll work for me for seven more years, I'll give you Rachel. So he did. And then when Rachel and him got married, Rachel was given Bilhah for her maid by her dad. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved by Jacob, he gave her many children. But he didn't give Rachel any. Well, Leah gave birth to Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and a daughter, Dinah. Leah's maid, Zilpah, gave birth to Gad and Asher. Rachel's maid, Bilhah, gave birth to Dan and Naphtali. And finally, the Lord opened Rachel's wound and she gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin. Well, once Joseph was born, Jacob gathered up his family and left toward Haran and he was going to Mount Gilead. Well, he didn't tell Laban. When Laban found out that Jacob left without telling him, he went after him. But God told Laban in a dream not to speak to Jacob in a good way or a bad way. So they made their peace and Laban went home. Well, Jacob and his family traveled on towards Canaan. Angels of the Lord met Jacob on the road and Jacob sent a messenger ahead because he was getting ready to go through Esau's part of the country. And remember, Esau wanted to kill him the last time Jacob saw him. Well, they sent the messengers to the land of Seir. That's in Edom. And he said, tell Esau 
thy servant Jacob has sent this. I will sojourn, I, I'm sorry, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and donkeys and sheep and cattle and men servants and maid servants and I have sent to tell that I may find grace in thy sight. When the messengers came back from Esau, he was following them. Jacob was scared. So he separated his people and Jacob prayed to God to deliver him from his brother Esau. And that night he brought a present of 200 she-goats and 20 he-goats and 200 lambs and 20 rams and 30 milch camels and their colts, 40 kine, 10 bulls, 20 donkeys, 10 colts, and he sent them for Esau. Well, that night, Jacob took his two wives and his two women servants across the brook to hide them. And then Jacob left and he was all alone. Well, that night, Jacob wrestled with a man until dawn. And when the man seen that he wasn't winning, he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and Jacob's thigh went out of joint. That's the top of your leg. The man said, let me go for this day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. The man said, what is your name? And he answered, Jacob. The man said, Thy name shall no more be called Jacob. You are now Israel. For as a prince hath thou power with God and with man, and you won. Jacob asked the man his name, and he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask me my name? And he blessed him. Well, Jacob looked up and he saw Esau coming with 400 men. Jacob bowed down seven times to Esau. And Esau ran to Jacob and hugged him and kissed him. And they cried. Esau asked about Jacob's family and they made peace with each other. Well, God sent Jacob back to Bethel, which is now called Luz, and Rachel died there as she was giving birth to Benjamin, Jacob's last son. Well, Esau went on to have many children also. So, this is a little story that I found on Esau. It says common sense isn't all that common. In fact, the common thread in many decisions is that they don't make sense. Esau's life was filled with choices. He must have regretted bitterly. He appears to have been a person who found it hard to consider consequences. Reacting to the need of the moment without realizing that he was giving up to meet that need. Trading his birthright for a bowl of stew was the clearest example of his weakness. He also chose wives in direct opposition to his parents. And he had to learn the hard way, sometimes like us. 
What are you willing to trade for the things you want? Do you find yourself at times willing to negotiate anything for what you feel you need now? Does your family or your spouse, your integrity, your body or your soul get included in these deals? Do you sometimes feel that the important parts of your life escaped while you were grabbing for something else? If so, your initial response, like Esau's, may be deep anger. In itself, that isn't wrong as long as you direct the energy of that anger toward the solution and not toward yourself or others as the cause of the problem. Your greatest need is to find a focal point other than what I need now. The only worthy focal point is God. A relationship with Him will not only give an ultimate purpose to your life, it will also be a daily guidance for living. You can meet Him in the pages of the Bible. Now this is a summary on Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are among the most significant people in the Old Testament. It is important to realize that this significance is not based upon their personal characters, but upon the character of God. They were all men who earned the grudgingly respect and even fear of their peers. They were wealthy and powerful, and yet each was capable of lying, deceit, and selfishness. They were not the perfect heroes we might have expected. Instead, they were just like us, trying to please God, but often falling short. Jacob was the third link in God's plan to start a nation from Abraham. The success of the plan was more often in spite of, rather than because of, Jacob's life. Before Jacob was born, God promised that his plan would be worked out through Jacob and not his twin brother Esau. Although Jacob's methods were not always respectable, his skill, determination, and patience have to be admired. As we follow him from birth to death, we are able to see God's work. Jacob's life had four stages, each marked by a personal encounter with God. In the first stage, Jacob lived up to his name, which means one who supplants, undermines, and grabs. He grabbed Esau's heel at birth, and by the time he fled from home, he had also grabbed his brother's birthright and blessing. During his flight, God first appeared to him. Not only did God confirm to Jacob his blessings, but he awakened in Jacob a personal knowledge of himself. In the second stage, Jacob experienced life from the other side, being manipulated and deceived by Laban. But there is a curious change. The Jacob of stage one would simply have left Laban, whereas the Jacob of stage two, after deciding to leave, would wait six years for God's permission. In the third stage, Jacob was in a new role as grabber. This time by the Jordan River, he grabbed onto God and wouldn't let go. He realized his dependence on the God who had continued to bless him. His relationship to God became essential in his life, and his name was changed to Israel. A prince who prevails with God. That's what it means. Jacob's last stage of life was to be grabbed. God achieved a firm hold on him. 
In responding to Joseph's invitation to come to Egypt, Jacob was clearly unwilling to make a move without God's approval. Can you think of times when God has made himself known to you? Do you allow yourself to meet him as you study his word? What difference have these experiences made in your life? Are you more like the young Jacob, forcing God to track you down in the wilderness of your own plans and mistakes? Or are you more like Jacob who placed his desires and plans before God for his approval before taking any action? You know, we can learn a lot from Jacob and Esau on how we should serve the Lord. Just remember, God's way is always the right way. See you next time. Love you. Bye. Bessie for that wonderful lesson. Now let's see what I've got planned for you. Well, I've got some coloring pages for you. And of course, you know, we're learning about Esau and Jacob. So here's their dad. And here are the two boys. And didn't it say that um, Jacob was holding on to the heel of Esau? Well, there is that picture. Wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? Okay, and here is Jacob fixing that stew that uh, Esau is going to beg for. Okay, so there's that picture. Color that nicely, okay? And maybe again, you could give those pictures to somebody that might be lonely right now. So just give them a, a picture sent in the mail or take it over to them. Okay, so we were talking about Isaac and Rebecca last week, weren't we? And they uh, didn't have any children for a long time. And then um, they didn't have a baby for 20 years. Most of you aren't even 20 years old. Maybe your parents. Okay, so and then after that, they had twins. They had Esau and Jacob. So those two boys fought all the time and they just didn't get along. And, and um, so we, we heard that in the story, didn't we? Well, we also know that Isaac's favorite was Esau and Rebecca's favorite was Jacob. Do your parents have favorites? I don't think so. But anyway, they decided that um, they would honor those boys. The, the two of them would take their own boys and just honor them more. So anyway, um, they were, Jacob was uh, going to make some stew because um, Esau was out working hard and, and uh, his dad Isaac wanted some stew so he was going to make some stew. So uh, Esau comes in out of the field and says, oh, I am starving, didn't he? And he said, I want some stew so bad. So he gave Jacob his birthright, meaning he was first, but he was going to give that privilege to Jacob. So he did just for a bowl of soup. Anyway, that's what he did. And so we have a paper here that we are going to do which has some things on the bottom and we're going to take those things and cut them out and we're going to put them in order. This is number one. That was Esau. Number two is Jacob. So make sure you get that. Number three was um, Esau trades his birthright for stew. That was number three, wasn't it, in the story? And this is Isaac tells Esau to hunt and cook a deer. Rebecca cooks two goats and Jacob tricks Isaac. That wasn't very nice, was it? That was what we call deceiving. He wanted his dad, Jacob wanted his dad to think he was Isaac because his, I'm sorry, yes, that he wanted him to be uh, Isaac. So 
he was going to put on some fur and some fur on his arms and so forth because um, Esau was very hairy. And so he wanted to uh, trick Isaac into thinking that he was Esau. So he put on, you know, this, these furry arms and so forth. So his dad would think he was the other one. That's deceiving, isn't it? Well, if you take a pair of sunglasses and you put these on, now these aren't my sunglasses. I actually think these are a pair of children's sunglasses. But anyway, you put those on and you see things differently, don't you? If it's darker in the room, it's not real light, you don't see real clear. And so uh, that's what they did. They, they deceived them. They saw things not, or Isaac didn't see things clearly. First off, Isaac was blind, but I mean, they deceived him by putting the fur on, making him think it was someone else. So sin always hurts, doesn't it? And it might be fun or pretty at first, but then it hurts. It hurts someone. It either hurts you or it hurts the person that you're doing it to, doesn't it? So um, sin distorts and deceives us into thinking we know the truth. We really don't, huh? So sin blocks our vision. So if we take these sunglasses off, we don't have black vision anymore. We can see because it's light out and so forth, but with those on, it gives us a darker image and it deceives us from seeing things clearly. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the stew here and we have a paper that has all kinds of things on it. We've got some carrots and we've got some herb spikes and we have some peas and we have onions and we have yellow peppers and we have red peppers and you can take a plate like this one paper plate and glue those things on that you would put in your stew so when you cut those out of your paper just put them on here and these are the things that you would put in a stew if you were making stew. Isn't that fun? Whoever made stew, did you ever make stew at home? Well, I've got a surprise for you today because we're gonna make some stew. But first off, we're finishing our stew here, putting it on the plate, and we're gonna even put our spoon on there. So glue the back of your spoon, put it on there, and look, you have a plate with your stew on it. Okay, so that is called Jacob's stew. So we are gonna make some stew, okay? So we got some hamburger, which is raw. This is a pound of hamburger, and we are going to brown that hamburger, which I've already done. Right here, there's the, oh, there's the browned hamburger. And we are going to put that in a big pot. And we are going to add corn, potatoes that I cut up, and some carrots. We're gonna put all those things in. And we're gonna put some diced tomatoes, which I've already put in here, and some green beans, and some peas, salt, and pepper, and then we're going to put some tomato puree. And we're going to stir that all up with our hamburger in there, and this is going to be our stew and you can make that for your family. Won't that be fun? You can help your mom, and I bet you've helped her in the past, but you can help your mom make that stew, and you can have it for your supper. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for uh, participating today. I love you, and we're gonna go to the devotional. See you soon. We're good. 
Today's devotional is entitled, Get It Done. All of us must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent me, for there is little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. We find that in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 9, verse 4. Do your parents ever ask you to pick up your toys? Do you remember to do it? Or do you sometimes forget? God wants you to get your work done. He can help you with anything, even work. We all have jobs to do, and each one is important. We should do our best to do our jobs when we are supposed to. Then you can enjoy the rest of your day and sleep peacefully at night. The thought of the day is, it's so much more fun to get things done. Pray today with me. Dear God, help me to do my jobs and thank you for my fun times. Amen. God's story, Jacob and Esau. So part of God's story is about twin brothers and it begins like this. Once there were twins named Jacob and Esau and they didn't get along. They actually started fighting before they were born. Then during birth, Esau came out first, but Jacob was holding on to his heel. That's not normal. And they even look different. The Bible says Esau's body was covered in so much red hair, it was almost like he had clothes on. Jacob's skin was smooth. Well, they got even more different as they grew up. Esau hunted animals and spent time outside. Their dad, Isaac, was a big meat eater, so Esau was his favorite. Jacob, on the other hand, was a quiet guy who liked to stay indoors. Their mom, Rebecca, liked Jacob the best. The Bible doesn't talk much about Jacob and Esau as kids, but we do know Esau was lucky to be the oldest because he had what's called a birthright. That meant Esau would be in charge of their family, including all their money, land, and stuff. Jacob would probably have to work for his brother Esau, and their dad Isaac would give Esau a blessing, which means Isaac would ask God to take care of his oldest son Esau in an extra special way. Well, you probably think Esau was pretty excited about this, but he wasn't. In fact, one day he gave it up. He'd just returned from a hunting trip. Since he was out killing animals all day, he didn't have time to eat. He came home starving. Jacob was making stew, so Esau said, Quick, give me some of that stew. I'm very hungry. Now, Jacob was a little sneaky, so he didn't just share the stew with his hungry brother, which would have been nice. Instead, he said, First, sell me your birthright. And guess what? Esau said yes. It's a little like paying a million dollars for a bowl of mushy soup. We don't know why Esau did that, but the Bible says he didn't care about the birthright. But later, when Isaac was really old and about to die, he wanted to ask God to take special care of his firstborn Esau. So he told Esau to go hunting and make him some tasty food, maybe for the last time. Now, Esau wanted the birthright, so he left right away to hunt. Meanwhile, Rebekah had heard Isaac and Esau talking, and remember, Jacob was her favorite. She wanted him to get the blessing, so she did something really sneaky. She told Jacob, I will prepare tasty food for your father. You take it to your father to eat, then he'll give you his blessing before he dies. See, Isaac was blind. She was telling Jacob to pretend he was Esau. But there was a slight problem with her plan. First off, Esau was hairy. So if Isaac touched Jacob's smooth skin, he would know the truth. The Bible says Esau had a certain smell too, which might be a polite way of saying he stunk. I mean, imagine how smelly a guy would be if he was always sweating and getting dead animal blood stuck on his clothes and matted in his hairy skin. And this was before deodorant. So even though Isaac was blind, he might smell Jacob or touch his smooth arm and know the truth. Well, Rebecca was sneaky like Jacob. She told Jacob to put sheepskin on his arms and wear some of Esau's smelly clothes. Now Isaac would never know. And even though Isaac wondered why the voice sounded like Jacob, guess what? The trick worked. Jacob got the blessing. Now Esau would have to work for him. As you might imagine, Esau was furious. In fact, Rebekah had to help Jacob run away so Esau wouldn't kill him. What's really crazy about this story is Jacob messed up big time but he really did get God's blessing. Esau even forgave him later. We don't know why God let this happen, but the truth is we all mess up sometimes and God still wants us to be part of his story. And that's the story of Jacob and Esau. 
So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jacob and Esau were twins. They were different. Jacob tricked Esau. Esau sold his birthright for stew. Later, Esau wanted his blessing. Rebekah helped Jacob trick his dad Isaac. Jacob got Esau's blessing. Esau was furious. Jacob ran away, but God still blessed him. And that's a part of God's story. youngsters well today we learned about jacob and esau what a couple of troublemakers right i'm sure you never fight with your brother that way well today we're going to listen to a song called blessings and birthrights and it says that if we are gods if we belong to him he will always bless and keep us enjoy blessings and birthrights Thanks so much for tuning in for another episode of Youngster Class. We hope you really had a good time today. Make sure before you go to do us a favor, hit that share button. Ask mom and dad to share today's video on Facebook so that other youngsters all over can join us as well. We hope to see you next Monday at 11 o'clock for the next episode of Youngster Class. And so since we've crafted and colored, we've uh, sang and studied, we've learned and laughed, you know what comes next. It's time for prayer. So let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Lord, as we come to you today, we're so thankful, Lord, that if we are yours, you will always bless us and you will always keep us, Lord. You've given us your promise to never leave us or forsake us. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, though we can uh, sometimes not be all that we're supposed to, you keep us every step of the way and you guide us along life's paths. Lord, help us to be thankful for our blessings and help us to live our lives for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, youngsters, until next time, we'll see ya.